how to set up a workflow job, create a job cluster to execute the job, and then to check on the status and the results of that job. First thing you have to do is to go to the Databricks login page. Users will be connecting to the production.gov URL. Uh, when you get to this URL, you'll get you'll see a button for single sign-on. At that point, you will be taken to the HARP login page. Typically, for the first time you log in, you'll get to the HARP page where you'll submit your credentials, enter in the code for MFA, and at that point, you'll get redirected to the same page I see here. Once you're on the landing page, first, you'll need to create a notebook you will set up as a workflow job. So you head over to the workspace menu, from there, go to your user, and then from there, you'll create a brand new notebook. And for this job, I will call it this demo job notebook. When you create the notebook, you'll be given a choice of the default language that you'll be using for the notebook. I'm just gonna go ahead and use SQL, and then you're going to be selecting what cluster that notebook is going to default to when running all of the cells and all the operations. And since I'm part of the QDAS group, and I'm running this interactively to set up the notebook cells, I'm going to connect to the QDAS compute cluster. This will take you to a blank notebook where I'm going to go ahead and just run some dummy uh, SQL commands, running commands like show databases. From here, I'll get a list of all the databases within the CDR, and then I will also run a show tables command in one of those uh, databases. So I'm going to run show tables and public data, and then I'll also Select from one of these tables. Let's select zip codes. I'm going to limit the results to 10. And then let's run another cell where I'm counting the number of records from that table. Take for instance, this is the mechanism and the workflow you would use to do your development where you're exploring data sets. And at this time, once you're happy with all the results, once you're happy with the outcome of what your notebook is retrieving and doing, this would be the point where you would take advantage of configuring a workflow in the Databricks platform. So to do that, jump over to the workflows menu, and then here you'll create a job. And when you create a job, you'll have to give the job a name, so say my new test job. And within this job, you can create tasks. And the first task in running one notebook, I'll call this test task run one and here is where i'll be selecting the type of task i'm going to run and i'm going to default this to notebook and then the source of this you can select either the current workspace or you can even specify a git repository i'm going to continue with workspace and select as part of this task the notebook that i just created earlier called test demo job notebook at this point in order to run that job you will need to create a job cluster in order to take advantage of the personal compute capabilities within Databricks to isolate this job from other operations that might be running on the compute cluster for other users in your group that might be running their notebooks interactively. And it will also take advantage of the lower costs for job compute units. When you are creating a job, always create a brand new job cluster. When you create your cluster, you'll give it a name, but it'll default to whatever the task is. And then with an underscore cluster, you can leave it the same. Uh, this point is where you will select the policy. So when creating a job cluster for your workflow, you will have access to a policy called a CDR Databricks Job Compute Policy. And within this policy, it's already pre-configured with the right configurations for your cluster, such as the number of nodes that your cluster will scale out to and have all of the appropriate configurations to connect to the CDR Metastore where all of the CDR databases are going to be. And for our case, we will want to connect to the CDR database where public data exists. The one action that all users will need to do is to select the instance profile that needs to be used that will govern your, all of the access controls for your notebook. For all users who are associated with a single group, you'll only see one instance profile here. However, if you are a user that's part of multiple 
contracts and as a result are associated with multiple DAGs, you'll see multiple options in this menu. And it's important that when you are running uh, your notebook and you're setting up your job cluster, that you select the profile for the DAG group your work is associated with. I'm just going to go ahead and select UDAS instance profile. And from there, confirm that function. As part of this job, there's other optional parameters that you can set, including selecting the dependent libraries you want to install as part of the cluster creation. However, you still have access to be able to configure and install all the appropriate Python libraries as you would when you execute a notebook interactively. Optionally, you can provide parameters to the notebook job as well. Where parameters are beneficial would be if you were to create a notebook where it's a job that you want to schedule to run every single month. And when that job is running, you are processing all the data for the prior month. This could be where you could generalize that notebook to be able to take in the month that you need to process as a parameter. You could set up a parameter called month, and then you give it a value of what that month is that you want your notebook to execute and query against. Other configurations that you can set up with a job is going to be emails, retries, and then timeouts in seconds. And the emails field could be if you want to be notified once the job has completed. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and then add that email. You can select whether or not you want notifications and when it starts, when it succeeds, when it fails. I'm going to set this to only be notified if there's a failure. From there, it's going to be added to your job. Next, it can also give the job the ability to retry if it fails. This could be if maybe in your notebook there's uh, a cell in there where you're making some type of connection to an external database, there may be some network hiccup at the time that this job is running. So in that event, it would be good to include some retries for that particular job, just in case there was a, a hiccup that happened at that moment in time. So I'm going to go ahead and configure this to retry three times with a total of four attempts. Maybe I'll wait um, between each retry for like a minute. And then also pre try and timeouts too. These are all things that you can configure along with your job. You can specify a timeout for your job, meaning if there's a part of your, your, your cell that's processing a lot of data and you don't expect for that job to run longer than an hour, it's good practice generally to always set a timeout in seconds for your notebook job to run because you can avoid running your job in an infinite loop and also avoid incurring costs during that time. Since that notebook job that I set up earlier probably will take 30 seconds to run or not, I'm going to put a timeout here for five minutes, which in seconds is going to be 300 seconds. I will create the job. I'm not going to set a parameter. I'm going to go ahead and create the job. And then here is where that job is essentially created. When the job is created, you get to this job management page. You see all the configurations that I said earlier, everything including the cluster name, the path to the notebook, uh, configurations for the emails, the retries and the timeouts. And so on the right side is where you also have the ability to add a schedule. This would be useful in that scenario that I mentioned earlier. If you had set and create your notebook to process data, uh, querying all of the last month's new claims data sets, that perhaps this is a job you'd like to run once every single month to be set at a monthly cadence. This could be where you specify the scheduled aspect of it, where you do it every month on maybe on the first day at, let's say, 11 in the morning. Now this job is scheduled to run. And aside from that schedule, you always have the ability to trigger that job manually. I'm going to go ahead and click run now. Once you run that particular job, once you go back to this workflow menu, you'll see your new test job there. If you click on that, you'll get to this page where it will show you all of the runs for that job. And as you can see here, we have a run that's currently running. The status here is pending. 
It's waiting for the cluster to get created to run your job uh, as an isolated job on your personal compute resources. And then at the very end of that job run, you'll see the results. It's going to take some time to have that cluster set up. It could take up to five, maybe even 10 minutes sometimes for the job to be ready. As soon as that cluster has been set up, the job will run. This is where if you click on that job run is where you're going to be able to see the final outputs of your notebooks run along with the outputs for each individual cell. While a job is running, and this is going to be important if there are jobs that you're running that might be taking hours, if they're scheduled to run or if you trigger them to run while it's running, you identified a bug in that notebook. There might be instances where in the middle of that run, you'll want to stop it. So when you get to that job menu and you see all of your runs in this menu here, you can also cancel that task run as well because there's no point in it completing if you know the results are not going to be accurate. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and cancel it as an example. That concludes setting up uh, a brand new notebook, creating a workflow, instance and setting up a job that points to the notebook that was created along with checking the status of the runs and canceling the job runs. I also went through the screen where once the job has completed and you were to click on that run, this is also where you would see the results of all of the cells getting executed. As you can see here, the output shows all the cells that are in the notebook. There's no output because I canceled it and run.